Have you ever thought, there's got to be a better and simpler way to learn organizational strategies? 5 Minutes Learning has a global and diverse collection of case studies to help management students click the subscribe button and hit the bell icon to stay updated with our upcoming and interesting case studies. Boeing is the largest aircraft company in the world, manufacturing commercial aircraft, military aircraft, satellites, weapons, and electronic defense systems. It has a history of being the best aircraft company in terms of leadership and innovation in aircraft design. The company uses advanced technology, engineering skills, and innovative leadership to design and develop its products. As a result, it is the best in the U.S. and worldwide, serving many other nations with commercial and military aircraft. In order to remain innovative and competitive, in the 1990s, Boeing started considering a replacement for the Boeing 767 due to a slow rate of sales. On December 16, 2003, Boeing announced that it was going to assemble the 787 jet in its factory located in Everett, Washington. In order to reduce the Dreamliner's development time from 6 to 4 years and its development costs from $10 billion to $6 billion, Boeing utilized an unconventional supply chain for the 787 Dreamliner. Boeing 787's manufacturing and assembly costs were kept low by distributing the financial risk among suppliers. Unlike the 737 supply chain, which relies on Boeing as a key manufacturer assembling parts and subsystems, produced by thousands of suppliers, the 787 supply chain is a tiered structure, in which Boeing would be able to partner with approximately 50 Tier 1 strategic partners. These strategic partners serve as integrators, who assemble different parts and subsystems produced by Tier 2 suppliers. The 787 supply chain resembles Toyota's supply chain, which has enabled Toyota to develop new cars with shorter development cycle times and lower development costs. In order to reduce development time and costs, Boeing has created strategic partnerships with approximately 50 Tier 1 suppliers who will build and ship entire sections of the Dreamliner to Boeing. It would allow Boeing to devote more attention and resources to Tier 1 suppliers rather than raw material procurement and early component subassembly. Until Boeing delivers its first 787 to its customers, no strategic suppliers will receive payment for the development costs associated with the 787 program. The purpose of this contract payment term is to encourage strategic partners to coordinate and collaborate on development projects. As a result, Boeing's strategic suppliers face some financial risks if their delivery deadlines are missed. However, they are incentivized by being permitted to own their intellectual property, which can then be licensed to other companies. It also allows strategic partners to increase their revenues by taking over development and production of the entire plane section instead of a small part. By decentralizing manufacturing, Boeing could outsource non-critical tasks. The intention is to reduce the capital investment for the 787 development program. Under the 787 supply chain, Boeing can assemble complete Dreamliner sections in three days. It is true that the 787 supply chain has the potential to reduce development time and costs, but there are various underlying supply chain risks. It relies on its Tier 1 global strategic partners to develop and build entire parts of the Dreamliner based on technologies that are unproven. Any break in the supply chain can cause significant delays in the overall production. Early in September 2007, Boeing announced a delay in launching the Dreamliner, due to parts shortages, software and system integration challenges. A web-based planning system like Exostar, will not be able to coordinate the supplier development activities, unless the supplier provides accurate and timely information. For example, one of the Tier 1 suppliers, Vought, hired Advanced Integration Technology, as a Tier 2 supplier to serve as a system integrator without informing Boeing. 
Advanced Integration Technology is supposed to coordinate with other Tier 2 and Tier 3 suppliers for VOT. Additionally, due to cultural differences, some Tier 2 or Tier 3 suppliers do not always enter accurate and timely information into the Exostar system. Due to this, various Tier 1 suppliers and Boeing were not aware of the delay problems in a timely manner, making it difficult for Boeing to respond quickly. In discovering that several strategic Tier 1 partners were unable to build distinct sections of the aircraft, or had no experience managing Tier 2 suppliers to manufacture the components for the sections, Boeing became aware that it needed to regain control of the development process of the 787. For instance, knowing that VOT Aircraft Industries was the weakest link in Boeing's 787 supply chain, Boeing acquired one unit from VOT in 2008, and then another unit in 2009. These two acquisitions provide Boeing direct control of these two units of VOT, and their Tier 2 suppliers for fuselage development. Additionally, some Boeing suppliers suffered substantial profit losses as a result of ongoing production delays, putting the Dreamliner program's completion at risk. Due to its reliance on just-in-time deliveries from Boeing's Tier 1 strategic partners, the 787 supply chain is likely to suffer major delays. If the delivery of a section is delayed, the whole aircraft's delivery schedule is delayed. There is a good chance that Boeing will face delays unless it keeps some safety stocks of different complete sections. Also, under the risk-sharing contract, None of the strategic partners will get paid until the first completed plane is certified for flight. Strategic partners may prefer to work slowly, rather than take the risk of being penalized unfairly by the risk-sharing contract, in spite of accomplishing the task ahead of other suppliers. Which undermines the original intent of the risk-sharing contract. To address suppliers' inability to meet production deadlines, Boeing sent key personnel to sites worldwide to fill suppliers' management vacuums and address production issues directly. The process proved to be too costly as Boeing personnel were diverted from their responsibilities to deal with supply and manufacturing issues at their outsourced partners' facilities. Boeing found using suppliers for subassembly too risky in certain circumstances, so it performed the work itself. In order to develop and build the Dreamliner, Boeing used an unconventional supply chain structure. Therefore, it is extremely critical that Boeing assembles a leadership team with supply chain management experts, who have experience preventing, anticipating, and mitigating certain risks. However, Boeing did not include supply chain risk management experts in its original leadership team for the 787 program. This was an unprecedented managerial risk for Boeing. For Boeing to restore customer confidence in its aircraft development capability and reduce any further delays, it recognized the need to hire someone experienced in supply chain management. As a result, the original 787 program director, Mike Baer, was replaced by Patrick Shanahan, who had proven expertise in supply chain management. As Boeing increased its outsourcing efforts, a growing concern about job security arose among the Boeing workers. Their concerns led to a strike by over 25,000 Boeing employees in September 2008. The strategic partners of Boeing were also impacted by the workers' strike. For example, in anticipation of the Boeing strike causing order cancellations and delivery delays, Spirit Aerosystems, a key Boeing supplier, shortened its employees' work weeks. As a concession, after two months of strikes, Boeing agreed to give its workers a 15% wage boost over four years. To address the key concern of job security, Boeing agreed to limit the amount of work outside vendors can perform. Therefore, Boeing's concept of outsourcing a significant amount of work to global partners could be compromised, 
causing production costs to rise. As Boeing announced a series of delays, some customers lost confidence in Boeing's aircraft development capability. In addition, there is a growing concern about the fact that the first 787s are overweight by about 8%, or 2.2 metric tons, which can lead to a 15% reduction in range. In response to Boeing's production and delivery delays, and the doubt about the 787's long-range capability, some customers have begun canceling orders for the Dreamliner, or migrating towards leasing contracts instead of purchasing the airplane outright. As customers began canceling their 787 orders, and the company's ability to develop the 787 was questioned, Boeing developed the following mitigation strategies. Firstly, Boeing is providing replacement aircraft to various airlines concerned about delayed deliveries of their orders. Secondly, Boeing has improved its communication by sharing progress updates on its website to restore its public image. A publicity campaign is also being conducted by Boeing to promote the 787's superior technology and its overall value. A revolution in supply chain strategy is taking place with Boeing's Dreamliner program. Boeing also boasted about its innovative manufacturing techniques and technological advances. There is a significant risk associated with such dramatic changes from conventional methods. A major reason for Boeing's ongoing delivery delays is that the company made drastic changes to the design, development process, and supply chain of the Dreamliner program at the same time without the right management team in place. Further, the team did not proactively assess the risks, nor did it develop coherent strategies for mitigating them effectively. It is impossible to identify all potential risks and prepare contingency plans for all eventualities before a project begins, but Boeing could have done a number of things differently. The lessons that can be learned from Boeing's supply chain restructuring are instructive for managers in any industry, so they may avoid similar mistakes in the future. Thank you so much for listening to this video. Do not forget to subscribe this YouTube channel for receiving updates about my upcoming case study videos.